Last weekend, as Tropical Storm Hillary approached L.A., a sign language interpreter for Mayor Bass helped caution KTLA viewers. Well, the Internet took notice, as you see there, of interpreter Rory Burton, who went viral. One post with millions of views and over 100,000 likes called her the best sign language interpreter ever. Let's listen in. And if there's anything the community and the public needs to know is do not underestimate even a tropical storm. There's potential for a lot of rain, debris, so we need everyone to take this very seriously. But now she has more to say. Joining us today are ALS interpreter Rory Burton, deaf interpreter John Mossier, and his interpreter, Neil Cordova. Good morning to you three. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Rory, let, let's start with you. Uh, what do you think audiences really take when they're seeing your signing at events like this? It's a novelty for so many hearing people, unfortunately, that haven't been able to see deaf interpreters or hearing interpreters like myself have not been exposed to American Sign Language. And so this is the first time for many of those people and they sit up and take note as a result. Now you brought along deaf interpreter John Mossier. Why was that important to you? What do you want the public to know about deaf interpreters? Especially for a situation like with Hurricane Hillary last weekend, that's information that's life or death. And so we want to make sure that we're able to reach as many of the deaf community as possible. A hearing interpreter is great, but a deaf interpreter is able to do so much more. And it's so important to include deaf interpreters for press conferences, camera forward facing events to make sure that more of the deaf population is included in understanding that interpretation. So let's uh, go to you, John. Um, what does your signing offer that might be missing with a hearing interpreter? Yes, um, like a deaf person like myself who grew up deaf, I mean, that culture is ingrained in us, you know? It's very visual. We use classifiers, for example, if I'm talking about electrical wires that are down, that is visual, you know? So I have a range that deaf people can't understand. So, and a deaf interpreter has that range. And then a lot of people, um take notice of the facial expressions. It's very animated when someone is doing an ASL um, interpretation. What is the significance of the, the facial expressions? Um, I like that you mentioned that. Um, very often, hearing people see the facial expressions and they think that it's funny, but honestly, those facial expressions are really important for grammar, am I right? Um, you know, it shows tone of voice. Um, if we're not showing that, it can seem really monotone when we're signing. We use our bodies as well, and that is all to convey that message. Mm, that like makes sense. The emotion, the inflection, like maybe what voice inflection would do. 100% that, yes. Oh, interesting. I'm curious, how does it work? So you interpret, and then he interprets your work? Yes, so I'm hearing the information as it comes in. I interpret it to what we call feeding. I feed John and John takes what I fed and flips it into something even more clear, mm. even more visual, even more um, reachable to the deaf community. More people can access that, that interpretation even. So, so there might be little things that... And really that feeding part is very, very important. Rory is amazing. She's amazing to work with. So there's little things that you're giving the basics and that he could really dissect because there's important information I would imagine that might get missed in what you're doing that's more detailed, I would say. I, my goal is to grab all of those details. Everything is included. Give it to him, feed it to him. He takes it and he puts it out in a way that's more visual. Sure. That's just, just clearer and able to bridge and get the range of the deaf community, no matter if they're assigning more English or if they're signing more ASL, there's a range. And yeah. so he can tap right through to that. Yes, and we deaf people know when we see deaf people, you know, we understand it a lot more. There's a lot more emphasis in the messages. And it's universal, ALS? Oh, no, no, that is often a question that I got growing up that was very like, oh, is that universal language? And it's, no, no, no. Ours is American Sign Language. Um, you know, some people will say sign language and they think it's universal, but we need to say American Sign Language because mm -hmm. it's the specific language of our own, you know, has a structure um, similar to English does. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when English, you know, w w 
people will think that you, you write in a certain way, but with ASL, the grammar structure is completely different. Oh, interesting. Rory, I just want to ask before we go, when the internet takes notice of you and it catches like wildfire for whatever reason, do you know that that's happening? Do you like it? Do you not like it? What's your reaction to that? Like, did you even know that that went viral when you were signing in our interview last weekend with reporter Aaron Meyer? I saw it on the shade room. I was, I was, I was like, <laughs> what's happening? I know that it's happening. People reach out and let me know that it's happening. Do I like that it's happening? No, because I prefer for the focus to be on, wow, there's a need for accessibility for deaf folks in the community. There was someone who posted a video uh, a news clip where I had been cut off because the frame was very tight mm -hmm. on the mayor speaking. Mm -hmm. And that person posted noticing that, wow, the interpreter's cut off, so the access that she was there to provide for the deaf community now is missing. Right, because in the room, you know, it, there's only a few people. The press conferences are seen on television for a television audience. That's right. where it's important to see you. So it's super important to not cut off, not tighten the frame so that only the speaker is there. We need to make sure that the interpreter is able to provide that access when you rebroadcast it, when you show clips, etc. Um, so that person posted, wow, the interpreter's cut off. Yeah. That's the kind of thing that we want to see. We want attention focused on accessibility, the deaf community, using deaf interpreters. Right. Hearing interpreters going viral is really not what we like to see. Sure. Understood. Yeah, and she did a beautiful, beautiful job, and this is extremely fast-paced, mm -hmm. you know, so we need to sign higher in that way. We can't sign so low, so we have to make sure that that access is there for the deaf community, so yes, yeah. yes, I agree. Well, thank, thank you, you all for being on this morning. We really appreciate it. We're taking the viral moment, and we're putting a good message out, right? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we got you. Thank you. And for thank more you, on thank you. Pro Bono uh, ASL and the local signing community, of course, you can visit ProBonoASL.com. You see the Instagram, Twitter, everything there. Check them out. Thank you so much. We'll be back.